there's been a real evolution of the role of cytoreductive nephrectomy in metastatic renal cell carcinoma over the past decade and a half. Initially, back in the cytokine era, we had data that suggested that cytoreductive nephrectomy improved outcome in individuals subsequently treated with interferon. But most recently, we have several studies that have come out that suggest that, at least in the context of antiangiogenic therapy treated patients, that cytoreductive nephrectomy does not actually improve outcome and might even there might be even a trend towards worse outcome. And so for that reason, at this point in time, we're certainly less enthusiastic about advocating cytoreductive nephrectomy as an upfront strategy for individuals with metastatic renal cell carcinoma. What's really interesting about renal cell carcinoma, having treated it for so many years, is how different each patient's disease is. And sometimes when we meet a patient for the first time, we're not sure what the character of their cancer will be. There are some patients whose cancer grows so slowly um, that really we aren't going to gain them anything by starting treatment because as I tell the patient, if you were on a drug right now, we'd be giving the drug credit <laughs> for controlling your cancer, but you're doing it on your own. And that's a group of patients who I think all of us favor observation or surveillance for. Um, we know they have cancer, we can see it on the scan, it's so small, they're not going to get a symptom from it, they don't have any symptoms from it, and scan to scan, there's no growth or minimal growth. The advantage to surveillance is several fold. One, they're not, they don't have side effects of treatment, they don't have to come to the center for infusions, so both convenience-wise, cost-wise, and quality of life-wise, it's better. But as I tell my surveillance patients also, the longer we can wait before we treat you, the more time it gives us as a research community to invent something better and to get something better for them. And so that when it is time for treatment, I hope that we'll have something even better then than we have now. And that really resonates with patients. It's hard, I think, to think you have cancer and you're not treating it. <laughs> People want to do something, and, and we hear that a lot. Um, but it's a marathon, not a sprint. There's strategy involved, and surveillance is a really important part of that strategy for the right patient. One of the other interesting questions in patients with renal cell carcinoma is, do you have to treat a person who has metastatic disease? So you may have an individual who has small size and uh, of, of metastatic lesions or small volume disease, and they're completely asymptomatic, and you have evidence that this disease is not growing very quickly. There are some phase two studies that have been done showing that it's okay to wait before initiating systemic therapy in these patients, and it doesn't, at least compared to historic controls, seem to really decrease their, their survival or their outcomes. The rate of change of lesions really will define whether or not you're in, you need to initiate therapy, as well as the burden of disease up front. 